Welcome folks, Jason Etienne here, Course Director for Games Art. In this short video, I'm just going to be going through a typical concept piece that I will be teaching uh, in lesson. It's going to be painted in grayscale, as you can see, and uh, it's really just to establish the values and also just to get an idea of if you're you know, creating a, um, a game art level, how you go about uh, doing this. So generally, I'd start off with something like a, a sort of grey sort of background and really just start blocking in uh, the elements that uh, I'm wanting to put in here. Now, obviously, you can work from reference if you have a specific idea. I think at the kind of like blue sky phase, as it were, I personally like um, uh, myself and students just to experiment just uh, play around with shapes, see what kind of works, what's kind of satisfying. And so what you're seeing here is, I'm essentially just putting some shapes in. I've got a kind of idea of, I wanted to kind of create a landscape. So I start kind of uh, really just blocking and stuff in the, in the background. And then I sort of go back and forth. So there's, you know, from the background to the foreground and just trying to kind of get a sense of space, a sense of perspective, what might be going on in this scene. You can see here also just putting in things like water. And again, just to kind of create this sense of distance and also just making sure that, you know, I sort of, uh, the background isn't sort of competing with the foreground. So, you know, um, as this painting progresses, as you'll see, um, um, I start putting things in, you know, particularly, you know, lightening the, uh, background, putting stuff in the mid-ground. And so what's starting to evolve here is really um, uh, you know, um, a sort of desert, sort of possibly like other world kind of a scene uh, with some vegetation, but you know, it, it's kind of like fairly kind of desolate. So putting some clouds in here. Uh, the brushes that I'm using here are, uh, are um, I think it's uh, stuff that I um, uh, got from online. Uh, which you can get, you can get brush packs. I think this is a Greg uh, Rudkowski uh, brush set, which is a uh, very, uh, very useful. But of course, you know, experiment with brushes as well. And always play around with the opacity. You can see there at the top <coughs> where it says opacity. Um, I've got it set at least to half. Uh, so when, when you're doing paintings like this, always kind of, you know, set your brushes to a lower opacity just so you can build up as you would do if you were drawing um, you know with a, with a pencil so see here I've got like a soft brush I'm adding like hazes to it I'm also now uh, putting stuff in the in the foreground so this is where our character is going to be sort of standing surveying this uh, vista as it were and just adding some highlights one of the good things as well is when you're doing uh, work like this is not to get too uh, bogged down in, in the details. I always, you know, refer to this as getting lost in the weeds. Try and resist that. Always kind of try and keep a general overview of what you're doing. Uh, of course, you know, you can add some details, but generally speaking, just try and keep it loose. Uh, a lot of the time you'll do your best work if you keep the work loose. Don't try and... Um, make it too finished. Certainly concept artists that I've worked with in the past, um, you know, some of the great ones, you know, they do some very, very loose sketches. And it's, it's, um, and, and a lot of that, uh, a lot of that is uh, due to time constraints. So you'll have uh, perhaps, you know, a matter of hours to kind of get a visual done for an art director or indeed a director of the production that, uh, that you're working on. So, um, so yeah, so don't be too focused on that, um, and also don't get too focused on um, on using colour. You know, um, colours are quite a big subject in and of itself. I think certainly learning values uh, when you're doing paintings, you know, finding out where the light source is, is um, the, the better method, as it were, when you're when you're creating these pieces. So you can see here, I'm just kind of going back and forth now, and um, kind of tweaking it, you know, I put some kind of uh, foliage and I put some trees there against the rock you can see there in the um, in the uh, sort of mid-ground 
I've got some more trees there. I'm kind of putting them in the uh, again in the sort of mid ground, and you can start to see really the picture starting to form. And again, just really going back and forth. This is you know something that I do, and again I try and encourage the students to do. Is just you know work back and forth. Work on um, sort of uh, taking a pause, having a look. Uh, maybe have a break. Have a break, pause, as you can see here. You know, just kind of like pausing the video, and then uh, continue working on it. Um, this is quite valuable. You'll you'll see um, artists do this, painters do this. You know, in the uh, you know, uh, just in the general art world, where you kind of stand back and look at the canvas. So uh, that's uh, that's what we're doing here. So, generally speaking, that this is pretty much the painting uh, finished at this stage. Uh, you can see here, just kind of start blocking the character, and uh, you know, uh, considering where the sort of a, a you know the position of the character is going to be. And again, just putting some sort of foliage in there. So this is going to be here, the sort of the the, the, um, the platform where the character is going to stand. But for all intents and purposes, the painting's almost sort of coming to a close now. Um, moving beyond this, um, it's also uh, important to kind of add that you know you don't necessarily need to leave a painting at this stage. Of course, what you can do is you could take this as a basis for then uh, doing a bit of photo bashing and if you don't know what photo bashing is you can essentially take uh, real world photographs and then overlay them onto your painting so that's quite in, you know um, 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 effective for things like textures so rock textures it could be wood it could be foliage so you know once you've blocked something like this out you can overlay images and, um, and get some really impressive uh, results uh, certainly for some of the work that I've done, uh, I have a YouTube channel, uh, Jason Etienne, if you go on there you'll see I do have some paintings where I do a little bit of photo bashing. Um, but um, but uh, beyond that, that is um, that is uh, pretty much it uh, for the painting. Just uh, some final touches with the character you can see there, just really shaping it. I like to start off with um, a, a basic shape and then I kind of sculpt into it, I take bits away. So don't be afraid to experiment, uh, block things in, work in silhouette, try not to put too much detail in, and see how your uh, work starts to form. After this, you'll see in the next few mo moments that we start to basically bring the picture together and then we will have the finished character before long. And there we have it folks. Uh, we have our character fantasy character overlooking the vista. I hope you found this uh, video useful and uh, hopefully it's given you some inspiration and also uh, some information about what we do here at uh, Games Art at Coventry University. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>